The Summer Swing Home of the PBA and CBS Sports Network. It's an all-new format with titles on the line and player of the year implications. New challenges await the pros, including three new oil patterns that will test their skill and versatility. The best bowlers in the world are on CBS Sports Network, and it begins with the PBA Badger Open. It's a beautiful day in the Bruce City, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Lake Michigan leads you to the Museum of Art in downtown Milwaukee. And not far from there, AMF Bolero Lanes just outside Milwaukee. It's the Lucas Oil PBA Badger Open. Five bowlers compete for a PBA title today. Hello again, everyone. Welcome to suburban Milwaukee. It's great to have with us. This is Dave Ryan. And what a pleasure it is for me to be broadcasting the Geico PBA Tour once again. We also make history on CBS Sports Network today. It's the first ever broadcast of the PBA Tour on our air. And what a week we've got for you with so many great events over the summer. It starts here with the first of five broadcasts. We'll have for you all summer long the winners of the Bear, Badger, Wolf, and Milwaukee Opens are in a spot of the King of the Swing, along with the top points earner to conclude the action from Milwaukee. We have step ladder finals today, starting with the fifth seed, Kurt Pilon, and three-time titleist Michael Haugen, Jr. But right now, joining our top seed, Josh Blanchard, it's Hall of Famer Randy Peterson, RP. So great to be calling bowling with you once again, my friend. Thanks, Dave Ryan. I'm really psyched to be working with you again, my friend. And speaking of psyched, Josh Blanchard is psyched. You know why? Because he's in the number one qualifier for this event. Josh, how does it feel knowing you come in today needing only one win to win your first ever title? It's nice that I don't have to throw 10 good shots instead of having to climb the ladder and worry about every player. I only have to worry about one today, and that's what I'm going for. Now, qualifying was done on wood at AMF Waukesha, but today at Bolero, we're bowling on synthetic. How different is your reaction from wood to synthetic lanes? Similar reaction as ball motion, but much stronger bowling balls because the bowling balls aren't going through the, they're going through the fronts much cleaner here than they did on wood. So stronger bowling balls here, and same look. Josh, thanks a lot. Good luck. Thank you. Randy, Josh, thank you. Here is the oil pattern. For the bathroom open, 52 feet by far the longest in the PBA Animal Library. High volume of oil down lane places a premium on accurately repeating shots. We could have a medium scoring pace today. We'll see how the five bowlers respond to this challenging pattern in Milwaukee. The number five seed has one PBA Tour title with two PBA Regional titles from Warren, Michigan, Kurt Pila. Is that my start? Are oh. you ready? You can tell it's been a while for Kurt. That's his start. He's ready. Hazel Park Bowl in Hazel Park, Michigan, outside Detroit. His home center. Oh. Not a good start. Uh, and you, you heard him say, Dave, when he let go of it, hook. And unfortunately, on 52 feet of oil, it, that's not going to happen. Even though the pattern is extremely long, you can see the players have broken down the front part of the lane and they've moved in to the middle part of the lane right around that third, fourth arrow, and you can't give away the head pin on 52 feet of lubricity. One, two, four, seven, and the four stands and open. Early frame for Kurt Pilon. Not been on TV since 2001. Oof. The number four player owns three PBA Tour titles, including one major from Phoenix, Arizona, Michael Haugen, Jr. <laughs> Keys to victory in. What, Randy, what do you think here for Michael Haugen, Jr.? Well, you know, he's been bowling really good this year. He won a tournament because he's been bowling with a chip on his shoulder. Kind of getting snubbed. Perfect ball. Crunches the pocket. Ten down of the pit. 
getting for snubbed. Michael Hogan Jr. Excuse me, Dave. Getting snubbed for not being picked uh, for the team series that we had earlier in the season. Just spoke a few moments ago with Michael about that. Using it as a motivating factor to bowl well. And, and on today's telecast, Michael Haugen Jr. is the one with all of the experience. Come on. Matches. A perfect pocket hit. Are you ready, Randy? Are you ready? Yes. 60 feet to success. I've been waiting Michael so long. Jr. I've been waiting so long for that. <laughs> I don't think you're cold today. It's hotter than hell in here. Whew. He's used to the heat. He's from Phoenix. TV lights really change things. On oh, the TV pair, back to Kurt. Boy, Ugh. and you can see the sweat, the perspiration I, 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 on Kurt Pilon's forehead. He looks like he's got malaria. I mean, and part of that is because of the nerves not being here in so long. You can see the first two shots that he's thrown on television thus far. One goes way light, the next one goes right up the gut through the nose, luckily only leaving the 10 pin. Which he converts for his mark. Kurt's arsenal today. Randy, what do you see here? Going with the defiant soul. Hook potential very strong. Going in the right direction. And that's typical on 52 feet of oil. Players have to get the ball into a roll. They're going to do it with using strong equipment. And they're going to, to use surface, meaning they're going to scuff up the surface of the bowling balls. It's kind of like putting chains on your tires when you're in the snow. Hey. Uh, Seven. Seven. Rough start for Mr. Pilon. At least this time he hits the head pin on the left lane. And again, it's another shot that goes through the nose, but no split. And it's still early. Kurt needs to somehow keep from the insides wanting to come up on the outside. Gain some composure and find the pocket. Oh, no. Watch it. Whiffs on the seven and open frame for Kurt Pilon. Come on. Tough, tough start for the former winner back in 2001 in Peoria. Beat Brian Voss. BV in the semifinals. And Paul Kohler in the title match back in 01 202 182. Great start for Michael Haugen Jr. A huge lead. It's early. Yeah, but if you're Michael Haugen Jr., you talk about getting loose in a hurry. Start with a double and then have your opponent just oh. open frame. Oh, hold, hold. It holds all right. Perfect line of the pocket. Going right at the 1 3 pocket for Michael Haugen Jr. Well, take a look at Michael Haugen Jr.'s form. He's right really there, a baby. dinosaur. When you think about all the power and revolutions out on this tour, Michael Haugen is as straight as they get, down and in player. And I, I think it was, uh, I, I think there was a lot of people surprised that he did so well on the long 52-foot pattern. But he's so good at going straight, and that's what you have to do on this oil pattern. Michael Haugen Jr. taking it to Kurt Pilon early. <laughs> Stays red hot. It's good stuff. Four straight. Guy's battled back. You know, he's had some injuries, had this knee issue. Michael Haugen Jr.'s really battled back nicely, capturing the win earlier in the season and off to a great start today. Front four for Michael Haugen Jr. had a tendon knee replacement surgery about a year ago. Says he's finally feeling 100% now. Back to Kurt. Can he find a pocket? He'll take it. I was watching Kurt Pilon warm up earlier, and he was starting with five, with four steps. I said, what are you doing with that four-step approach? He says, well, that's what I do to get warmed up. Here's a typical position, that great knee bend, and then obviously the great balance at the foul line. He's kind of a middle-of-the-road player in terms of power. He can still get on it, but he likes rolling the ball, and that's, I think that's why he did so well in this 52-foot oil pattern. All right, he's starting to keep food down now. That's a good sign. 
Again, long, long time between shows, 2001 to 2013. Randy, that can't be easy for a player to make that kind of quick adjustment from being away from the bright lights for so long. No, you're right, and I just had deja vu. No, I, I just thought that I was sitting next to you doing a bowling show. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. You are. I, I am. Friend. You are. It's great to be reunited. Don't start singing. That comes later. <laughs> Caught a break. Avoided a split. Four up for Michael Haugen Jr. After the front four. And that's going to be the typical miss for Michael Haugen. Michael Haugen unless the lanes break down, he doesn't anticipate the move early. But you're going to see him jamming that ball into a 1-3. I don't expect him to miss light uh, or miss the head pin right. It's not his DNA. He likes to go straight and hard. Throwing a Marvel Pearl. In, in, in interesting that he's not going with uh, the strongest piece of equipment that he has available to him. But obviously, this gives him the best look. And for Michael Haugen Jr. on this pattern, it's all about hold. It's all about missing target left and the ball laying there. The only question I have, Dave, is how long his shot holds up. Does it hold up throughout the day? Great start, Michael Haugen Jr., 16th year on the Geico PBA Tour. He told us, say, I'm 46 years old. I'm a young 46. I can still bowl the young guns and win titles. He looks great so far. Lucas Oil PBA Badger Open on CBS Sports Network is brought to you by GEICO. Saving people money on more than just car insurance. By Jack Link's Beef Jerky. Feed your wild side. And by Barbasol. Shave like a man. Summer right around the corner here in Milwaukee, Wisconsin off Lake Michigan. Beautiful day outside. Great bowling inside at Bolero Lanes. On the way in the first step ladder match today, Kurt Pilon from outside Detroit is back up in a big hole against Michael Haugen Jr. from Phoenix. A little. Yeah. Help on seven. Turkey. Nice little break there. He's working on a double and needs to get back into the game and cut in the deficit. You see that ball crossing right over the middle arrow. The 20th board carries the light Wally. Let's not forget that these players qualified at AMF Waukesha Lanes, which, was, which is a wood surface. Here at Bolero, it's all synthetic, synthetics. And so the two surfaces are going to play different. Eating. Hi. Oh boy, it's the big four has the 6'10 remaining. It's just not clean at all. A little grabby and a little pull on that shot there. The difference for me between the two surfaces, Dave, is the wood surface is much more porous. And the players' bowling balls are going to read that surface much earlier and much sooner than they are on the synthetics. And it's going to change the down lane reaction. Stumbles a bit there. Look at his footing, but does pick up the 6-10. Felt like a foul. He did foul. I think things are going real well right there. Let's go back and see if he actually did foul. Foul. And that is yeah. a foul. So he'll get zero for that second shot. Oh. Pat Mitchell, our PBA foul line official, sitting right there on top of it. He saw it and called it. Great call. Okay, over there. Hagen Jr. We'll take that. Locked in. 58 pin lead. So it's going to happen, I guess. No, he coughed. But if it's going to happen, it's the best time in the world for it to happen. Mike looking for his second title of the year, winning the Mark Rod Classic, defeating Scott Norton, who left the 4, 6, 7, 10 in consecutive frames. Final 215-194 captures third Geico PBA Tour title.
Out of two championships also came in the same season in 2008, and there's a 4-7 for Michael. Well, he's got such a huge lead now. He's basically got it on cruise control and making sure that he continues to have a good look going into the next match. Well, he might get lucky. Or no. not. <laughs> That's a stupid Open. fair ball, man, I tell you. I got to scuff that for the next match. Not what he wanted, but still a big lead, so he's got a little comfort zone. Well, the lanes are so slick, throwing a plastic ball as straight as Michael Haugen Jr. can throw it could actually fade away from the spare. Ten pin for Kurt. I think so. Told us yesterday, yeah. Randy, about his See if they don't foul. heart attack in 2006. We'll talk more about that in a moment. Good look here at how straight the players are playing in, in the lack of back end ball reaction. That's because at 52 feet of oil, there's only eight feet of back end left. The lane being 60 feet in length doesn't leave you a lot of friction down the lane. Yeah. But you're right. It's been an amazing story. 100% blocking yeah. in 2006. Drove himself to the emergency room. He said it felt like an elephant was stomping on my chest, and he almost drove past it. That is the hospital thinking, oh, I'll be okay. Take some medicine. Take some aspirin. Good thing he did. Would have made it. Yeah, he, he's lucky to be here today, and, and it's a great story that Kurt Pilon survived a heart attack at age 34 and back again bowling on television after winning his first and only title. 12 years ago. He's 40 years old now and just had a new pacemaker put in about a month ago. He showed us a scar yesterday. He said it hurts still. Stiff there trying to get it rehab. It's over. Of course, his non throwing shoulder, but still. Glad he's here competing. Nearly a split. That would have been trouble, but the four pin stands for Michael. And, and there's part of the advantage of having a 44 pin lead where you can switch balls in the ninth frame and and kind of test the waters with a little bit different ball reaction. <laughs> 74, 745 career, thousand dollars earned by Michael Haugen Jr. 15 regional titles. And the 97 PBA West Region Player of the Year. He told us before the show here today, feels great about his game right now. Knee feels better, healthy, very confident coming in. As the four seed, trying to climb the ladder. Uh, and you can wrap it up. You know, you can see by that style, the way Michael Haugen Jr. hits that foul line and plants that slide foot, that his left knee is going to take a beating. Um, it's a good thing that he keeps himself in great shape and keeps the weight off because there's no way that his knee would be able to withstand that much punishment if he didn't take care of himself and he was, uh, if he was a lot heavier. Trust me, I know from experience. Another ball change. Some experimentation here. He'll be up again soon. Climbing this ladder. Thank you. Aaron Lawrence of Belleville, Michigan, another Detroit area product. And collegiate bowler awaits as the third seed to take on Michael Haugen Jr. next. Three bowlers in this five-man field. Bidding for their first career title. Four championships between Kurt and Michael combined coming in. Uh, it's nice to see Kurt Pilon bowling well again and He's still very active, competes in a lot of events, a lot of local events, bowls in well, probably about half the PBA tournaments this season. And he's just a nice guy. I've known Kurt for a long time. Good guy and good bowler. As he told us yesterday, he's just thrilled to be here on TV again. First time in so long. It's a good memory. And a good way to build on the future for Kurt. I see on the show again. Kurt leads a 10. Michael Haugen Jr. will take on 
Aaron Lawrence in the next match. Haugen Jr. had a great start to this one and had plenty of an advantage to hang on. Trying to climb the ladder and win a championship in Milwaukee. One down, a couple still to go for Michael. Michael Haugen Jr. front four and he wins over Kurt Peel on in the first up ladder match. 224 to 180. Alvin Jr. will take on Aaron Lawrence coming up next. Michael continues his quest for his fourth career PBA Tour title. Randy now joined by Kurt Pilon. Thanks, Dave. Kurt, it sure was nice to see you back on the show. And I know you got off to a tough start. It, it must have been tough for you. But overall, I mean, explain how your day went for you. I, you know what? I got off to a rough start there. Lanes are really, really tight. It's the tightest pattern we bowled on ever. Uh, I thought I had a pretty good look there and did, didn't wasn't real crisp the first couple shots. So we got in trouble early. Haugen put the you know put the good shots on me and I couldn't really do a couple good ones there. Left to ten had a foul, so I got a rounded out day. I should be pretty solid. I can you know I can go from there. Can we expect to see more of you? You know, God, I hope so. It's been a long time chasing the tour around and uh, uh, it was 60 tournaments between this one and the last show and that was 10 years. So. Uh, I'm going to work my butt off and get back because uh, I think we can do better than that. We love having you out here. Thanks a lot, Kurt. Appreciate it. Thanks a lot, Randy. Thank you. Randy, Kurt, thank you. Coming up, Michael Haugen Jr. against Aaron Lawrence. Lawrence continues the journey to try to win his first career PBA Tour title. More on the way from Milwaukee. outside Milwaukee. Michael Howden Jr. climbing the ladder. Set to take on the three seed Aaron Lawrence from Belleville, Michigan. The youngster only 23 years old has never won a Geico PBA Tour title. Maybe he makes history today. We'll find out. Nice start for Michael. Now the Thank front you. four to begin his first match. The number three seed is a first team All-American at Saginaw Valley State from Belleville, Michigan, Aaron Lawrence. Sweet and low, one of his nicknames, and I robot the other. Used to, when he was younger, wear some elbow braces sort of made him look robotic. He likes both nicknames. Now that's not what I heard about the iRobot. <laughs> oh, there it's a split to start. 4-9. I asked Aaron why iRobot. So did I. What did he tell you? He told me it's because he looks like Sonny from iRobot. That's true. That's true. He did say. Both parts are true. Not the kind of start that you're looking for when you throw your first ball ever on television on the national tour, 4-9 split, not a very good break. Open frame leaves the nine. Collegiate bowler at Saginaw Valley State, first team All-American this past year. He's got ten teammates who are here today. Rooting him on as we see Aaron's arsenal. Going with some strength, something that rolls really, really good and continues through the pins. Defiant soul. Big four. four six, and that continued four, six, seven, ten. One of the hardest shots in the game to convert. It's only been made once by a guy you may remember. I called it with you in Atlanta. Walter Ray Williams Jr. I called that. Goes way back, partner. Take out the 6-10, leaves the 4-7, open frame. Oh, we're good. Back-to-back -back open frames. 
really, really tough start for the youngster. Got to be nervous. TV debut on the PBA Tour. He's had collegiate ITC championship television appearances before. Michael's got to feel pretty good about <laughs> how things are starting in his two matches so far. Opponents are really failing. <laughs> He's got a split, too. Another that four. looks familiar. 4 9. Yeah, another 4 nine, 9 on the right lane. And <laughs> Michael Haugen Jr. not able to take advantage of the back to back open frames from Aaron Lawrence. Usually more accustomed to seeing the, that 4 9 left when the ball enters the pocket really sharp. And that's not the case on this 52 foot all pattern. You know, the other thing I think you need to realize is that the longer that oil pattern gets, that bowling ball is not losing any speed. It's basically coming down a 52-foot ramp. It only has eight feet of back end to slow that ball down into the pocket. So as that ball enters the pocket, it's going pretty fast. And it's crazy this four because that's a similar hit where he left the 4 9. This time he trips the 4 9. Right around the third arrow. And that could have been another 4, four 9 real easy. Instead, it's a strike for Michael Haugen Jr. So back to Aaron told us yesterday he's as even keel as they come. He will not panic, even with a bad start, which he's had. So we'll see right, if that less. works out for the youngster. His first strike, as we talked about, Aaron's first appearance in the PBA Tour, not on CBS Sports Network, though. Recently crowned champion of the X Bowling Intercollegiate Bowling Championships, the ITC. In his two games for the title, Aaron threw 20 of 24 strikes, defeated Brock Finch of Urbana University, 245-222, to take home the title. And there's the trophy. Dave, Aaron's used to throwing a lot of strikes. In his very first regional, he had back-to-back -back 300 games and finished second. Wow. Where'd that bounce come from? 6-10. And he needs to figure out the left lane in a hurry to have a chance against you know, Michael Huggins, Jr. I, robot. That's so funny. <laughs> He's talking about the ball bouncing a little bit on this left lane, and a little hard to see it in the monitor there, but... There's a pickup. He's a small business entrepreneurship major at Saginaw Valley State. Just good. wrapped up his junior year. A number of five tournament wins. Has been named to nine all tourney teams for the Cardinals. Collegiate bowling power. An amateur in this event. A proven PBA Tour winner in Michael Haugen Jr. Three career titles. Major champion winner as well. Look how straight this ball is going down the lane and just ever so slightly makes a little bit of a move into the pocket. 22nd career TV appearance. He's 3-2 and two in title matches in his career. Told us one of his... Great TV memories actually came in a loss to Pete Weber. 2001 Louisville Open. Where he bowled 279, Pete had a 289. Come on. No. And that's where Pete yelled at him and said, going. You're not getting your first title against me, fun. no way. <laughs> this ball comes into the light swish zone and. 4-5-7 standing for a minute. Pin takes the 4-7 out. I think my my fondest memory of Michael Hagen on TV, though, is when he came back to beat Chris Barnes in the Tournament of Champions. During the last, last five in a row, he was down 53 pins after six frames and went through three different bowling balls and all of a sudden found something through five in a row. Barnes misses a spare late, and Michael Hagen Jr. ends up winning his first and only major of his career by one pin. Randy's keys for Aaron. What do you think? 
Well, I like the iRobot theme. He's got to stay <laughs> cyborg like. And he's like got, that. He's got to stay focused and, and stay in the moment. But Dell Ballard Jr., his ball rep and Hall of Famer, tells me that he's got one of the best mental games on the planet. And I said, well, why is that, Dell? And he said, well, he just, nothing bothers him. Nothing, there's nothing in front of him except the target he's looking at. And he tries to hit his target, and whatever happens after that just doesn't factor into the equation. Yesterday, I've got to be a good shot maker and adjust to the adjusting oil pattern as things break down later on in our stepladder action. Lawrence head to head with Michael Haugen Jr. We are back in suburban Milwaukee. Started this event off with 90 bowlers, 79 PBA members, and 11 amateurs, one of whom is Aaron Lawrence. As he battles Michael Haugen Jr. here today. Second match, stepladder finals. Top seed is Josh Blanchard. Mike Lawrence bidding for his first career title. Ten pin. Good shot, too. Made a little adjustment off of the high hits on that right lane and gets a bad break here, leaving a ring at 10. Pretty good shot here. You can see just peeked in just a little bit more to the center part of the lane. And another ring at 10. Haugen, a good spare shooter as well. You're not going to see him miss a lot of spares. He keeps the ball in play. Real steady. Three rack, Kurt. Remember, we talked about some of the knee issues that he's had. He's had knee surgery. And watch how hard he plants this last hey, step. There's not even it? any slide there. You see, he just had a little bit of trouble got. sticking the landing. That's why his knee takes such a beating. Off the surgery last year and aggressive rehab, he told us today that that knee feels better, finally. You bowlers, the wear and tear on your bodies, it's amazing. So much practice, so much competition. Sand pin again. It's just so much of a repetitive, repetitive motion. And after a while, the parts just give out. I had three knee surgeries. I had a partial knee replacement. The last knee surgery I had, it just, just took a pounding all the games and that flexing motion at the foul line. But still in your first ever PBA 50 tour event and date. Congratulations, Randy Wynn, this year. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Aaron's family is here. Renee and Bob. Abigail, Aaron's sister, have come from Detroit. It's all history about a six-hour drive for the family. Watch Aaron goes for his first ever career title. What a moment that would be for the Lawrence family. Crunches all 10 down into the pit. And here's the, a position that Michael Haugen Jr. has not faced all day long, and that's trailing in the match. Family, yeah, you better believe it, and a lead by two pins now for Aaron for the first time. Remember those opens? Begin this match off for the first two frames. Seems like a long time ago. Trying to stay hot. You bet. There goes the seven pin late. He'll take it. I robot just stepped up through four in a row. Now has a 12 pin lead and all the pressure right back on Mike Logan Jr. as this ball is just high flush, almost at least a stone seven. What a great shot. By the 23-year-old Thor Bagger and a 12-pin lead. Algon Jr. works on a spare. Eight frame. Another spare. Well, he got four there. Nine. Four nine again. Third time in the match we've seen the four nine. And the second time for Michael Haugen Jr. as he makes a ball change. 
and unfortunately it's another 4-9 on this right lane. No chance. Nope. <laughs> Nine stands, open frame so late in the match is big trouble. The lead balloons at 25 pins for the kid. Aaron Lawrence sitting on the bench watching this happily. Look on our four bagger himself. Well, and Haugen does the right thing. I mean, he didn't have a very good look after the first game. Is is a little inconsistent into the pocket, so he started to fish and try different equipment, but that wasn't the right ball either. As he miss air goes through the nose, Didn't and this matter, match folks. is all Didn't but over. Chop there to lead number six. Open frame, of course, deadly at this stage, and he knows it's all but over. One more time. Well, another strike here, and Aaron Lawrence is going to guarantee us one thing today, and that's the PBA Tour will have another brand new winner. Good stuff there. 46 pin lead. Five bagger. He is an amateur, so it will not officially count as a PBA Tour title. Win for him, but he told us yesterday, for me, it counts. It's pretty big. Uh, I promise you. Regardless of status. I promise you, it's certainly going to count in his heart and his mind. Oh, no question. Just just not on paper. He said he'd gladly take the cash, though. Imagine that. This game is over. Aaron's going to advance to take on Jake Peters. The two seed who also is looking for his first career title, only 24 years old. Picks up a 6-10, another mark. First ever PBA Tour TV appearance. Successful for Aaron Lawrence. Michael Haugen Jr. told us today that he spent yesterday just resting the body, really exhausted after the long run. So many events going on this week in Milwaukee. It'll be a disappointing finish for him, but not for that young man. Twenty-three years old, sweet and low. How sweet it is. Six. Seven. One, two, four. I really Not thought the way Michael wanted to go out here. I really thought Haugen had a good chance on this because of how straight you need to go, and he likes to throw it straight and hard and jam it right into the one three, and and that's what you have to do. The problem is once the front ends break down, he's forced left and he has to create a little bit of angle, and it only takes a little bit of a miss to the right to flag the head pin. He's the eighth to wrap it up. Aaron Lawrence looking for his first ever PBA title. Wins easily, 215 to 170. Next up, Jake Peters, 24 years old from Decatur, Illinois. Step ladder continues from Milwaukee. Welcome back to the Geico Super Swing here in Milwaukee. Aaron Lawrence, a five-bagger, part of a 215-170 win over Michael Haugen, Jr. to advance up the stepladder, bidding for his first-ever PBA Tour title. Player of the year race, Belmo from Australia, Parker Bowen III, a championship, in addition to a pair from Mika Kovunemi and Scott Norton. What are your thoughts here on some big names in the PBA Tour? Well, Scott Norton... And Mika Koivu Niemi are the only two players that have won multiple titles. Scott's won both of them on U.S. soil. The son of PWBA Hall of Famer Virginia Norton. He's got it done nicely this season, but I think he's got to do a lot more to catch Belmonte for a couple of reasons. 
Del Monte, number one in average, number one in points, and you saw the money list. Scott, the 2010-2011 PBA Rookie of the Year, captured his third career title, winning the Earl Anthony Players Championship. He's cashed in 10 of 11 events. He has entered this year as well as making three TV finals this season. We shall see who wins the Player of the Year race. I'm with you. Belmont is going to be tough to displace there. You throw a U.S. Open title for, up there for Scott Norton. He's he's my number one. We've got much more coming up from Milwaukee. There's Jake Peters from Decatur, Illinois, looking for his first ever PBA Tour title, only 24 years old, against fellow youngster Aaron Lawrence. Step ladder action continues. Lucas Oil PBA Badger Open on CBS Sports Network is being brought to you by Lucas Oil, the world leader of high performance and problem solving lubricants for everyday cars and trucks. By True Value. For tools, products, and expert advice for all your project needs. True Value. Start right, start here. And by Icy Hot, America's number one topical pain reliever. Great look, Museum of Art here in Milwaukee. Step ladder bracket. Already Michael Alden Jr. defeated Kurt Bjorn and really fell apart. The ladder frames against youngster Aaron Lawrence. Jake and Aaron, the next match. The number two player is a three-time collegiate team champion at Wichita State from Decatur, Illinois, Jake Peters. Two players going head-to-head -to, -head to try to get one step closer to winning their first ever career title on the PBA Tour. Got to be special for these youngsters. Great start for Jake. It'll make it really interesting if he advances to take on Josh Blanchard. They are good friends, former teammates at Wichita State. Aaron Lawrence, a champion of Division II, Saginaw Valley State currently. All right. See how he responds to his first ever TV win on the PBA Tour. Can he continue success? Oh, that's got Shim. Shim! 4 7. Got it in and asked for a Shim. A Shim of oil and uh, fortunate only to leave the 4 7. On your hold line. See, that's pretty direct and not enough oil to push that ball far enough to the right. And a nice break only leaving the 4 and the 7. Which he picks up. Making the grade. Not bad, huh? They're in success at Saginaw Valley State, as we talked about. Jake and Josh, former champions, all Americans at Wichita State. Former teammates at Wichita State. Yeah, it's going to be dramatic if they face each other. All 10 down in the pit for Aaron. It looks to me like the left lane's starting to break down a little bit more and starting to hook. And what the players are doing now is they have to move deeper. And when they do that, they have to create a little bit of angle, meaning throwing the ball away from the head pin. And on 52 feet of pure, nasty slickness, ball speed is crucial. You've got to slow the ball speed down enough to get that ball to read it down the lane. The seven pin late for Jake Peters. Well, Jake Peters has got a lot of experience on these long patterns. Take a look at that big high backswing. Really gets into that leg, that slide leg there at the bottom of the swing and catches a nice wally there. But he's pulled in, in an event in St. Louis the last three years called uh, the InsideBowling.com Open. He won the inaugural event and finished runner up the second year in 2012, and that's a 50-foot oil pattern. A lot of experience bowling on length. 
It shows there. Perfect shot into the one-three pocket. For Jake, you and I called his championship of the Team Masters in 2006 in Orlando, as you reminded us yesterday. We still got great memories of that. Been a long time, of course, since that event, but a lot of success in college. Trying to continue that here on the PBA Tour for his first career win. He was only 17 years old back then. And for those of you tuning in for the first time today and watching these two players wondering, hey, who are these guys? Uh, this is the future of professional bowling, two of the brightest up-and-comers that nobody's heard of yet. But you're going to hear a lot from these two young men, two great kids. It was a pleasure talking and speaking with both of them, uh, you and I, the other day. Uh, when we spoke to these two guys, it was really enjoyable learning more and more about these two great players. Yeah. Oh, boy, the big man. four. That's that the good fun. news. Four, six, ten. Dangerous split. And you heard him say after he let go of it, or after this ball went through the nose, that it was all him. Even though it looked like he threw a pretty good shot, it just didn't react properly, went through the nose, and he paid for it. As Aaron told us yesterday, being even keel like his favorite all-time Detroit Red Wing, Brendan Shanahan. Love that name. Legendary Red Wing. I've even heard of Brendan Shanahan. <laughs> he was one of the all-time greats. See if you can do that. Jake gets help on number seven. Down it goes. Carrying all the light hits and just shredding racks with the ball that's fading into the pocket. It's pretty impressive. We asked Jake, how different will it be bowling on synthetic lanes compared to wood in the qualifying? I think um, the, the where we're going to play on the lane is going to be the same, but I really think the moves on the lane are going to be much different. I think it's going to be a fun challenge with, with the new bay, with the TV lights. I think it's going to be a lot of fun, and I think it's really going to be the, the person who can adapt the fastest and, and stay in the moment and, and really grind out the game is going to be the winner. Looking to increase his lead by 45 with another strike, which he does. Well, that's five in a row. Perfect start for Jake Peters, his first time ever on national television on the PBA Tour. And, well, you, you can't start any better. Run five. Response. All ten down for him as well. A good response on the right lane, but what is he going to do in terms of uh, adjustment on the left lane? Pretty much locked in, almost at least a pocket seven nine. This is the big shot right here, though. He can cut the deficit down by ten, down to thirty five. But he's got to start stringing strikes, and he knows it. Looks for a double here. Last time on this lane, just. Had a nine-pin count. There it is. Back to back reduces the lead to 35 pins for Aaron. Well, this is a nice shot that he makes right here. The adjustment had to be perfect, and he throws a great shot, and all ten go down. Now the question, can Jake Peters continue this hot streak as you take a look at his arsenal throwing a primal rage. Got that index finger at the base there taped up. Big blister underneath that. How about half a dozen? You bet. Stays perfect, front six for Jake Peters. Good stuff. Unexpected, to be honest with you. Very few come out their very first telecast and do what Jake Peters is doing or do what Aaron Lawrence has done, and that's win a match. So hard bowling on television. 
the setting's so much different than what you're used to bowling all week long and qualifying. Not seven. Seven pin count ends the long run. Two, four, eight still standing here. What happened? Got it just a pinch right. And looks like he clotted at the bottom. Just missed it just a hair at the bottom, and that ball scooted. And this is not the easiest of spares to shoot at. Two, four, eight. You got that ba the back pin, the eight pin. You must cover with the bowling ball. Picks wow. it up nicely. Covers all three. Gets his mark. But still, Aaron Lawrence looks for the turkey and can reduce the lead when we return. We could have a great finish from Milwaukee. Step ladder finals continue. Welcome back to the Lucas Oil PBA Badger Open on CBS Sports Network. Jake Peters head to head with Aaron Lawrence. Third match, step ladder finals. The top seed Josh Blanchard from Phoenix awaits. We will have a brand new PBA Tour champ. That much we have decided already coming in. Mike Logan Jr. had three championships. Kurt Pilon had one. And the other three, all bidding for number one. And memories for a lifetime. That's not good. Didn't like it for good reason. Man. Five, stand. Four, six, seven, nine, ten. Split the Greek church. Well, uh, Greek church. Unfortunately, just a bad shot. He gets it in, and that ball just goes right through the schnoz. Leaves a pretty ugly design. Oh, look at the reaction. Saw Carmen Salvino, PBA legend back there. Could not convert the Greek church. Such a difficult split to try to cover, of course. He's looking for a turkey there and is down 61 pins. Some other notables, Chris Barnes and Belmo. We'll see them throughout the summer swing. Some great names up there. Andres Gomez, Jason Sterner, TJ, my buddy TJ, and Mike Fagan. Wow. Kick a man when he's down, really? 8-10. Lack of resolution. Never split. Well, and this is a split that you just don't see anymore because of the length of the old patterns and the strength of the bowling balls. And uh, we did see 810s throughout qualifying at Waukesha lanes on the wood on this 52 foot pattern. Not good. So Peters works on a spare here, eighth frame, and he is in tremendous shape. As yeah, balloon bal the lead balloons to 72 pins. Yeah, Jake could take a nap right now and still win this. Shots like that, he will. Head to PBA.com to check out all the officially licensed PBA merchandise and apparel. Items available at the online store include T-shirts, hats, jackets, polos, hoodies, and more. Simply click the shop tab at PBA.com to get started. I got you a hoodie for your birthday. I appreciate that. It's yeah. coming up in a few days. You're an XL, right? Large, actually, but I'll take you XL. Well, just wash it in hot water and dry it for about four days. It'll fit. <laughs> this match is over. Jake has clinched it. <laughs> and he will move on to take on Josh Blanchard. Well, former college teammates at Wichita State. Sorry, Dave. Jake Peters is a really nice young man and, and very personable. And Boy, I, I thought he was a pretty good guy until I saw what he just did to Aaron Lawrence. I mean, he's strike out to shoot 270. Apparently, he's in a lot nicer off the lanes than he is on the lanes. Yeah, that was pretty good, too. I just fell way behind. And just couldn't figure it out. The youngster looking for his first... Career title will not happen today. So well, Jake will take on Josh. We haven't had a player win two games in a row on the telecast either. Pretty good starting the game. As we talked about uh, with Josh Blanchard, the top seed before our match play started today, 
Josh so excited to be able to sit and watch, not climb that ladder. But that can be a tough position as well. One game, everything on the line. Got the eighth out. <laughs> Well, as soon as he's done with college, he's going to join the PBA Tour and sure hope we get to see him again. Really good player and a lot of fun, good guy, great personality. I think he'll be a factor in. Up and coming star. Perfect ball there. Bowling this year's all right, PBA one World more Series of Bowling in Vegas. Best finish until this in five PBA events in which he competed 49th at the PBA Chameleon Open. So great finish for Aaron. Coming so close here in Milwaukee. What's up? Hey. I'm going to give it a little uh, Good luck in the finals. famous Thank you. golf analyst. Hammer. I don't want to rain on uh, Aaron Lawrence's parade, but he could lose by over 100 pins if Jake Peters strikes out. This for 93 pin lead, which he does. Fan club's excited. Hey, Jake, don't waste him. He's already won. You know, he could get a penalty for piling on right now. <laughs> Throw a flag? Yeah. <laughs> Is that going to come from the booth? Come from you, Dave Ryan. <laughs> Top seed, Josh Blanchard. Former college teammates with Jake Peters at Wichita State. Legendary coach Gordon Vatican's got to be pretty interested in this result coming up. You saw Josh Blanchard's face there. He was clean shaven before this, this show started. <laughs> There's the 10 pin. Although that was a foul, we're now told. Nice game. Hey, good luck in the finals. Regardless of that foul, it's an easy win for Jake Peters from Decatur, Illinois. What a setup we've got for you in the championship match. Former college teammates, top seed of Josh Blanchard and Jake Peters are set to go head to head. The championship on the line. Two C. Jake Peters throws the front six. Easy win over amateur Aaron Lawrence, 265. So 174. Now he'll take on the top seed, Josh Blanchard. Blanchard for the Badger Open title. And now Randy is joined by Aaron Lawrence. Got to be proud, I'd imagine, Randy of his first career TV appearance. Hey, thanks, Dave. Aaron, we sure enjoyed watching watching uh, you go at it today. I know that you would have wished the outcome would have been different. But, but tell everybody at home what your experience was like today. Oh, there's nothing like this. I mean, to get this many people here to watch us, this was fantastic. I mean, a once-in-a-lifetime experience for sure. And so what happened that last, that last game against Jake Peters with your ball reaction? Oh, well, the lanes dried up a lot quicker than I thought they would. Um, I thought I was staying on top of moves, but I guess not. Uh, I was pretty happy with the majority of my shots, but I'll know for next time. That's for sure. When do we get to see you next time? Uh, hopefully soon. I'll write you a note, get you out of college early. Perfect. Appreciate it. Thanks very much for your time. Thank you. Randy is still a senior to be at Saginaw Valley State in Michigan. Number one seed is Josh Blatchard from Gilbert, Arizona, just outside Phoenix, looking for his first Thank career PBA title. Let's find out more about Josh Blanchard. Grew up in Southern California, grew up in the same organization as uh, Randy Peterson and the junior amateur tour there and then uh, just have moved up the ranks since then uh, gone to college and then become professional bold team USA junior team USA have done all that um, and just out here now um, got married a couple of years ago to my wife and 
and I wouldn't be able to do this if it wasn't for her. She's really supported me, and she takes care of everything at home when I'm gone, and I'm gone a lot. So uh, without her, none of this would be possible. So I'm thankful I have her in my life. And he and wife Amy are expecting their first child, a daughter, August 14th. What better way to get ready for the baby's arrival than to win his first career championship? He'll take on former college teammate at Wichita State. What a time that is. Jake and Josh next for the championship from Milwaukee. The top two seeds are still standing. Number one seed, Josh Blanchard from Gilbert, Arizona, outside Phoenix, will take on the two seed, Jake Peters from Decatur, Illinois, for the title. Time now, Randy, for the Geico Championship Recap. Oh, if you insist, Dave. Match number one was all Michael Haugen, Jr., as he takes advantage of some open frames by Kurt Keelan, gets up to a quick start with the front four and never looks back. He wins 224 to 180 over Keelan. Then in match number two, Mike Lauga Jr. takes on the rookie, the new guy. It was all about Aaron Lawrence. And Aaron Lawrence, he comes through with five in a row, fifth through the ninth frame, and just gets all over Haugen Jr. and ends Mike's day. 215 to 170. Then in match number three, Aaron advanced to take on Jake Peters. He wished he hadn't. Jake Peters started with the front six. Got a spare in the seventh and then struck to the tenth. It was all about Jakey Boy. All over Aaron Lawrence, 265-174, setting up a great title match. That is his nickname, Jakey Boy. Will be Jake the Man if he wins his first title. Do you change Jakey Boy? Or? I think you have to. I think so, too. you got to progress. Championship match coming up. <laughs> Top two seats. Head-to-head, -head. as we talked about, former college teammates, very good friends still. Jake told us yesterday that Josh was by far the better player when they are at Wichita State playing for Gordon Vatican. One game, big stage here. Good hit. Great start. Well, it's going to come down to one thing for Jake Peters, and that's can he keep it together mentally and not get ahead of himself and think about Wow, I'm just one game away from winning my first ever career title. He got to, he's got to stay in the moment, not not get past himself. The tournament leader is the reigning PBA Rookie of the Year from Gilbert, Arizona, Josh Blanchard. Four top ten finishes during his rookie year in 2011-12. Four regional titles, but no career PBA. Tour titles heading into the summer swing. Number seven goes down late. Well, I watched the players warming up, and I know it was an hour and a half ago, but nobody threw more strikes than Josh Blanchard in practice and you know I talked to him about it prior to going on the air said yeah that's always a good feeling to have he's got a lot of confidence I think confidence is probably his biggest asset he's a great shot maker he has plenty of power he's not the most powerful player out here as evident with some of the two handers and guys like Sean Rash but he's got plenty of power he's a good shot maker but he's very confident yeah come on come on perfect Ball into the one three pocket for Josh. Told us yesterday his strength is the confidence and staying strong mentally, which will be a big test on this big stage today. I think that's the last thing Jake Peters needed to see is a player that he competed with that he admitted to was better than him in college get off to such a hot start let's see what that does mentally to Jake Peters a couple hot bowlers to begin action here in the championship match Josh and Jake are the number one and number two seeds at this event 
Not the first time they've been on the same TV show. We talked about Wichita State. 2010 Blanchard and Peters Bowl for the champion Wichita State Shockers in the ITC. Third consecutive national title for the Shockers and their record 10th title. Jake was pumped. Josh was pumped. Clean cut in that shot, huh? Clean shaven. <laughs> Good shot. One time, kid. Yeah. Everyone's perfect so far. Uh, what a great break. This ball's going to drift high. You can see that left lane is certainly hooking much sooner than the right lane as evidence to how deep the players are. But that's a nice break there for a three-bagger. Almost to make four, but still eight. That's Carbon Self, you know, again reacts in the background next to DBA Tour Commissioner Tom Clark. Top break, split coming. Well, it might as well be a big four, but the four, six, seven, or excuse me, the four, six, ten, just as bad. That ball cuts right through the nose, and I know that that was shocking to Josh. He didn't expect the ball to jump up to the face like that. Bounce. Uh, not bouncing out. Four stands, open Come frame. On. And the streak of five straight strikes between our two finalists. Throwing the hooking us ball in his arsenal, the Enigma. Right now he's got to forget about the shot on the right lane and get right back on the striking machine. Pin. It was a good shot. He went with a little more ball speed, especially on that left lane that hooks a little bit sooner. Not a very good result. Family here watching. It's Jake Peters' dad and his fiance. Josh's wife, Amy, expecting the baby we told you about on August 14th. 10 pin, daughter is coming. They don't know the name yet. Still looking in the name book. Randy's a nice name. Randy with an eye. With an eye. I kind of yeah. like that. Yeah. Davida, you know, for you. Okay, I wouldn't even cross uh, those off the list, guys. But yeah, forget Randy and Dave. <laughs> Davida. Go with something nice. Now, Jake Peters, all he's done is strike all day long. Two. 60 first game winner. Now he starts with Good first shot. three again. One time. And Jake and his fiance, Melissa, are set to be married on September 21st. So, pretty exciting events coming up in the lives of these former Wichita State Shockers. Other finishers, some really big names, including Mika Koibu Nemi, one day bound for the Hall of Fame. Former Player of the Year, Sean Rash, the reigning Player of the Year, PBA Tour. And Norm Duke will be in the summer swing. 37-time titleist and a Hall of Famer. Oh, baby. I mean, what's so impressive about what Jake Peters is doing is, number one, it's his first time ever on television. Number two, he's bowling for the title for the first time ever. And he's all over John's, Josh Blanchard like a bulldog on a pork chop, and he's calling every shot out of his hand. As soon as it leaves his hand, he's like, there you go. He likes it. Good one. He likes Perfect. it. Perfect. There it is. I mean, this guy's unconscious. Red hot to start this match off with the front five for Jake. Oh, God. Push, 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 push. There's the strike. Well, Josh had many great moments, and we have to show it to you. It's obligatory when he bowls. One he'd like to forget, World Championship of Bowling, look out. Oh, my. 
He fell right on the mic pack, too. And, and let me tell you something. You got a piece of metal the size of your wallet in your back pocket. That hurts a lot. Yeah, he told us yesterday that his hip really hurt. Yeah. He had to fly to the Middle East to compete in his next event, and he landed. He was all kinds of sore. But as he said to us yesterday, he wants to be remembered for other accomplishments like winning his first PBA Tour title. But he's gained so much international notoriety from the fall on YouTube that that's been pretty cool, too. It's not all bad. Yeah! Everyone Come knows on. about it. I remember him for a guy that throws strikes just like the one he just threw there to cut the lead to 35. Reigning Rookie of the Year. That's pretty good, too, on the resume. But a definite silver lining on that. People know who he is. Back half. Start to the UK. Been outstanding oh. so far. Can you keep it up? Oh my! Almost! Almost! Oh, Nine and a Five half. Wins. And Jake made a big run in the last eight games of match play when he was in 18th. I didn't leave one earlier. He went from 18th to second. The last eight games of match play, shooting games like 289, 277, 277, 258, 279. He's already he already has. 1-260 game in the book here today, 265, and he's en route to shoot 279 if he strikes out. Five pin, easy pick up. First time winners this year, Tom Doherty, Jason Sterner. Ronnie Russell, Jason, part of the summer swing. We'll see him here in Milwaukee. Exciting young bowler from the Atlanta area. Someone joins the list here. Jake or Josh? Seventh frame and a big lead. Help me. Ten pin. Hold up, ten pin. Hold up, ten pin. Hey, nine spare, nine spare is okay the rest of the way out unless Josh Blanchard can strike out and put pressure back on Jake Peters. Right now, Jake Peters with the spares bowling at a 238 clip. But Josh Blanchard still has a possible 255 if he takes it off the sheet. That was some quick math, my friend. And I was told there would be no math today. Good prank. I was good at that. Ten pin pick up. Great guys, Mark. Wouldn't this be ironic that you and I called his uh, his junior masters win or the teen masters teen win masters right in Orlando? In what year was that? 2006. 2006. Yeah. And then you and I call his first ever PBA title. He would owe us so much. At least something. Match play record coming in in the average. Only one game necessary for Josh. Turkey here. Possible seventh frame. How does the I again. Look? Face that one goes through. Three, six, ten. Wow. Struggling on the right lane with just too much down lane reaction. Too much down lane back end reaction. Watch this. You can see how deep he's playing. And right there looks pretty good, and then it just breaks loose. And that's the one thing you don't want to do on this long low pattern. 52 feet, the Badger pattern, longest of the summer swing. Nice pickup. Which brings me to a question that I. that's really been just burning a hole in my head ever since they came out with these patterns. If this is the longest of the named patterns, why Badger? Why not Giraffe? I'm I just can't I'm answer that. I'm just throwing it out there. Maybe next year we'll rename them and they'll be all your choices. Th that would be awesome. <laughs> Go through. Back Go through. to Josh. Perfect. Come on. One more. One more. One more. I would have like the giant tree sloth pattern. We wouldn't use oil on the lanes either. We'd use like maple syrup. Just don't get started. Please. Too right, late. Right now, Jakey Boy is in cruise control. He has just a couple of frames in front of him.
in his first ever career PBA title. Great shot. Reward me. He liked it for good reason. Six feet to success for Jake. His dad, his fiance, love it. September 21st, a little early wedding present for Jake and Melissa. Wedding's coming up. Told us yesterday, Gordon Vatican, great Wichita State coach, taught him so much about mental toughness. That's one of the, the best things that goes on at Wichita State and from Gordon Vatican. Oh my God, that's great. Terry. Confident, isn't he? You don't need a play by play or a color analyst. All you need is Jake Peters. He'll tell you how good that shot is. 46 pin lead. Back score for Josh Blanchard, 232. Jake Peters could go nine with for 235. Almost crosses over to Brooklyn Where there. Did that come from? And Josh never figured out the right lane. Part of the disadvantage of being a tournament leader is you don't see the transition. You get you do get practice. But it's not the same as bowling an entire game on the on the pair of lanes and seeing the lanes go through transition and uh, you know you get a win under your belt you know exactly what the lanes are doing and Jake's going to be the first player today to win back to back games so uh, he was the only player that actually took advantage of that. I wonder if he's thinking about it yet. He looks pretty focused still. He's still visualizing. Oh, telling himself stay in the moment, but on the bench, he is in great shape. He told us yesterday it'd be a dream come true. It's all about the hardware. Hey! Late hit on the four pin. Takes that down for Josh. 212 max score. Jake Peters just needs some count. He's eyeing that trophy. Excuse me. <laughs> Doesn't even need count. Needs one pen. <laughs> Coulda, woulda, shoulda. Jake's probably, or, uh, Josh probably a asking himself, hey, maybe I should have started with that ball. At least I stay behind the foul line this time. Yeah. <laughs> a quick mention of the fall that we showed you. I didn't. Didn't matter to you. And he does take it pretty well. Yeah, well, he's a good kid. Young guy, 25 years old from outside Phoenix. Thank you. Thanks it up. As a top seed bidding for his first ever title, Josh finishes out with a 212. Only two pins needed for Jake for his first championship. All the hard work, all the years, practice. Told us yesterday he started bowling at age two. As soon as he could stand with the plastic pins in his living room and throw them down. Here it is. Oh. Doesn't matter. It's all over. It is over. And for the first time in his career, Jake Peters from Decatur, Illinois, is a PBA Tour champion. What a moment. And congratulations to Jake. Nice pick up too. Icing on the cake. One more. One more for the win. Red ball. He'll head to that trophy in a moment. Good ball, brother. Good ball, well deserved. Thank you. It was a hell of a game. Hell of a game. Got it.
hard work, the hardware. That's what it is. Thank you, Motive, Turbo, everybody. You guys are the best. Thank you. Yeah. I said it's pretty cool. Former nickname, Jakey Boy. Current nickname, Jake Man. First career title. Let's take a look at the Lucas Oil shot of the day. Ninth frame, Randy. Well, Jake just did nothing but throw great shots all day, and he did. He just outstruck his opponents and took advantage of every open frame that came his way. He never took his foot off the gas pedal. How's that for an early wedding present for fiance Melissa? September 21st, the wedding day. What a way to start off the summer swing for Jake Peters of Decatur, Illinois. He's a PBA Tour champion. Takes down his former college teammate, Josh Blanchard, 245 to 212. You remember your first title? I do. 1986, long time ago, but I do remember it. It's with you forever, right? Anything. With you forever. Moment right now, Jake the man. It's Jake Peters. He wins in Milwaukee. Lucas Oil PBA Badger Open on CBS Sports Network is being brought to you by GEICO. Saving people money on more than just car insurance. By USBC, the national governing body for bowling. Providing services, resources, and standards for the sport. To learn more, visit us on bowl.com. And by Lucas Oil, the world leader of high performance and problem solving lubricants for everyday cars and trucks. Milwaukee, one of the all-time great bowling cities, and some history made today as Jake Peters wins his first career PBA Tour title over Josh Blanchard, 245 to 212. Winner and second place finisher joined out by Randy. Thanks, Dave. Josh, the number one seed is the most enviable position because you only have to win one match to win, but it's also a very tough position to win from. Lanes go through a lot of transition. What happened out there today? Ah, oh, the left lane was perfectly fine. Uh, I caught a couple transitions on the right lane, and then uh, interference from somebody on um, on my uh, seventh frame, which really cost me. But I'm not gonna take anything away from Jake. He bowled a great game, and I would have had to put together some stellar frames to beat him. So kudos to him. Well, I know losing is never fun, but yeah. I guess if you're going to lose, maybe it's not so bad when it's uh, one of your ex-teammates and good friends, huh? Exactly. I'm more than happy for him. I'm upset I didn't win, but I'll have another chance one day. So really happy for him, and he bowled great. Josh, thanks very much for your time. Jake, wow, what a performance today. I mean, you made the lanes look simple. You know, you told us yesterday in an interview, if you were to win, it would be like a dream come true. Well, the dream has finally come true. Tell us how it feels. It feels unbelievable. I may, I may have to wait till tomorrow to tell you because it still hasn't hit me yet. It was just, you know, uh, you know, unbelievable. I, uh, I knew coming in, I, I knew Josh better than anyone else on the show. I knew I had to put great shots together, and I was very fortunate to start the uh, start the day out with the front five, and that just made my swing loosen up really quick and caught a good break on one I threw out the window, just leaving a five pin and. It all worked out really well from there. So I mean, you made David and my job very easy today. You you were actually calling the action after the ball left your hand immediately. Uh, it was fun to listen to. But why was your reaction so good today? Um, <laughs> the red ball, uh, the motive primal rage. They they just came out with it. That that ball is unbelievable, awesome. And all I had to do was just put it online, and it did the rest for me. So that's all I worried about. Uh, that's all I told myself: stay in the moment, put it online, and. I mean, all but one shot, it, it struck when I got it there, so it was awesome. Congratulations. Enjoy this win. Thank you very much. It's awesome. Thank you. What a moment for Jake Peters from Decatur, Illinois. As he wins over Josh Blanchard, 245 to 212. Be sure to join us Tuesday, June 18th, 7 o'clock Eastern for the championship round finals of the PBA Wolf Open. For Randy Peterson and our tire crew, it's Dave Ryan saying so long from AMF Bolero in Milwaukee. For scores, highlights, features, and more, go to CBSSports.com. It's been a presentation of CBS Sports Network, the play for our home of CBS Sports. For the first time in his career, 24-year-old Jake Peters is a PBA Tour Champion.